welcome to my fourth sh um, show, Relax into Sensuality, Your Adventure in Purity. Um, I have no idea what is going to come up. I know what I want to talk about, but I have so many thoughts running through my mind. I just realized I have to just do it and just be candid and just be authentic and real. I kept trying to come up with, you know, exactly what I wanted to say and, and I just, I can't, I'm, um, I'm realizing the implications of being truly, truly um, pure in my purest self um, and being a feminine, um, feminine woman and really getting into my core of who I really am. All the answers, um, are within my childhood. And, um, so <laughs> I just have these random pictures. I have so many pictures. I'm not going to show you them all. We'll just see what happens here. <laughs> um, so this one, I was, I think about seven Halloween and, um, all those dress ups, all those times dressing up and wanting to be a princess. And, um, how did that shape my idea of what it means to be a girl? Um, another picture that I have is, um, this is such a random picture, but I didn't spend very much time at my mom's house after my parents got divorced. My mom went crazy. And this was at my mom's house. And I remember this quilt in particular because one day I was at my mom's. Um, I was like 11 or something. And I had been swimming all day. And then I like didn't change out of my swimsuit. And I was sitting on this quilt. And um, I don't know what I was doing, drawing or something. Like I was sitting there for a long time. And then when I got up... And looked at the quilt there was this big red spot there and I thought I had started my period and I was so relieved because I was at my mom's house I just wanted my mom I did not want to have to go through that with anyone else when I was 12 I moved in with my aunt and uncle and I almost I almost didn't see I almost didn't see my mom at all from age 12 to 18 um, and my mom was toxic and that was absolutely what I needed and what she needed. But, um, but it doesn't matter when you're a little girl and you're going through like those kinds of things. You just want your mom. And so I was like scared, excited, and so relieved that I was at my mom's house and I went running to her. And like, we, as we sort of check things out, we realized it must've been like the chlorine in the swimsuit mixing with the fibers in this blanket that actually made this red spot and I actually didn't start my period yet and um and so when I did actually start my period it was super traumatic for me my aunt was very closed down and she didn't want to talk about it and it it felt like so shameful and all I could say was I just want to call my mom I just want to call my mom and she wouldn't let me call my mom because and I can understand why, because my mom was very toxic. But in that moment, when I actually did start my period, I just wanted my mom and my aunt wasn't willing to step up and be the mom that I needed. And so again, I look at this picture and I just think like, how my, um, all so many thoughts and beliefs I was taking in as I, went through these experiences of initial steps of becoming a woman and um some other like stuff I have like I have all these super sweet little pictures this was a picture of my bed when I was a little girl I was an only child like can you tell that I was really loved I was really my dad's sweetheart. I think about 
the way that he treated me. And I, I know that a lot of what I learned about how a woman should be treated, how a, a feminine should be treated by the masculine came from my dad and the way he treated me. Not the way he treated my mom, because he actually didn't treat my mom very good. He cheated on her. He was addicted to street drugs. Um, he was a workaholic. He struggled. Like, he struggled so much, but he was my everything. He called me my Melissa. Beginning to try what it felt like to not condemn and judge myself constantly and constantly beat myself into this box of whatever I thought I needed to be as a woman and really just look at what am I. I started to actually finally remember good parts of my childhood and and actually start to even really be able to look at these pictures and cry and feel and um, and just receive, receive it all. Receive the awkward feelings, receive the judgment, receive the sadness and the hurt. Receive the, um, this is me, it can't be anything else. I've tried so hard, it can't be anything else. And, and finally, and I don't think this came in one moment, it came in many, many moments and maybe even still continues. But finally feeling like God or the universe or whatever you relate with said back like, There's nowhere to go. There's no one else to be. It's just you. And you're, you're all I've ever wanted. <laughs> In all the mess. <laughs> just me. Just the way I am. I needed that softening so, so much. I needed it. And, um... There was no way that I could really truly begin to embrace my purity, my purest, truest self, without really facing um, and fully, radically accepting, not just accepting, relishing in me in all my stages, even right now. Uh, my challenge for you for this week is um, to take some effort to heal your inner child. Um, I would love to see pictures. Like, I would love <laughs> to see pictures. I just took you down this huge walk down memory lane. I would love to see pictures. I would love... Um, to hear any attempt that is made because as much as I know that I am enough um, it is still something that comes up for me every single day that I get to play with and um, observe and work through and as much as I know that I'm enough I know that about you too 